Hey everyone, I've recently been getting a ton of questions about how to build effective on-market lists within batch leads. So in this video, we're going to do just that. Be sure to go to the description and join the community so you too can ask questions and get connected with the rest of the group. But in the meantime, check this out. So I know that we recently posted a video on finding sellers and buyers and building those lists, but that was focused more on off market. And now we're switching over to on market since we got recently, you know, new filters within batch leads that you should definitely try out and let us know how it goes. But we're going to go into property search within my account and I'm not going to get super nitty gritty with all the things you can do in this section. You can always go to help in the top right hand corner and you can visit our help center. There's a ton of detailed videos and articles there. And then of course you can always join the community, get connected and see some of the tips and tricks we post there as well. But in property search, you can use location or boundary. I'm going to do location and I'm trying to break out of always searching in Arizona since that's where I grew up and I am going to go to somewhere else. So let's say that we're going to go to Chicago. Okay, just type in your area. You could do a zip code, a county, really anywhere that you want, and then click search. You'll get your grand total on the right, and then we're gonna go and filter this down. I'm just gonna immediately open up this blue filter button at the top of the screen. And some of the new filters we brought in recently is this lead finder section and this quick filter section. So all this lead finder section is doing is it allows you to apply default filters or it has default filters that it just goes through all of the sections that we've always had and it groups them up for you and of course we've brought in some completely new filter sets too but let's say that we choose on market you can see that there's blue bubbles in certain sections and all it's telling you is that hey we've applied some filters from this area that's where we got them type deal so with on market what pops up for you to make your life easy is days on market deal potential and arv this is brand new that we've never had in batch leads before it's only been around a few weeks and i'll break that down in a second and then there's pre foreclosure status in your build so with spread and dollar amount and arv i'll kind of hover over these you can read them if you want to just to get a better idea. And then here's the ARV one. What this is doing is basically the system is looking at what properties are listed on the market for, and then looking at what their potential after repair value could be. And we get this information by looking at comparable homes in that area for what sold for on average, a higher price, which is pretty cool. So you can apply that dollar amount or the ARV percentage instead. So like for example, easy way to think about this is that let's say that you are looking at an area where there's three bedroom, two bathroom homes that all sold for $100,000. Then a property gets listed for $75,000. Then the system would pull that up in this scenario where I have 75% down as the percentage because it's looking at all of those other properties that were listed at $100,000 and pulling up something that pops up that's listed for you know a lower price at that percentage, which is pretty nice. So anyway, give that a try. Let us know down in the comments what you think and any questions you have, of course, when building your list. So I'm gonna walk you through what I would do for building on market uh, list here in just a moment, but I'll show you some of the other things in here too. Like if you switch over to off market, it does a similar thing where it groups things up for you, but now it's switched over to like equity percentage because that's really important when finding those off market opportunities, years owned, you can always adjust these. So like it's a defaulted to a minimum of one year owned. So if you wanted to change that to seven, you know, 10 plus you absolutely could and also you can take filters off so if you don't care about something at all there's these little subtraction symbols over to the right and you can just click on it and it takes it out of your way and then last but not least are these quick filters this is really really awesome because you can now stack list when you're pulling just one in your account so you could say hey i'm looking for absentee owned vacant and maybe it's an active auction right now or it has an auction date type deal. There's ownership and vacancy status sections, listing status, pre-foreclosure and auction, equity and loan, and then other like no HOA fees, etc. And once again, if you have questions on these, just hover over it and it will give you a deeper idea. So now you can basically stack list just when you're pulling it rather than after it's already been saved, which is nice.
So getting back to pulling these on market list, I'm just going to reset my filters just to get that out of the way and start fresh. Let's go back up to this lead finder. So let's say that we come in here and we're looking for on market opportunities. You know, you click on the on market just to bring up some of those defaulted ones. One of the really big filters I like to use when looking for on market listings here and keep in mind what I'm looking for in this example are properties that need work, that they need some TLC. It's probably going to be best suited for a cash buyer for an investor is the type of properties I'm looking for. So the days on market, why I like this filter set is that sometimes I play around with it. That's the beauty of these filters is that this might not work super well in your market. So play around with these and do different dates and do different percentages. I have to play around with these all the time when I go into different areas, depending on the market. So days on market, there's a couple different ways to go about this. That I like to do number one, I might do something like a max of two days on the market just because they've only been on the market for such a short amount of time and in this scenario of looking for properties that are best suited for like a cash buyer, these can go really quickly of people finding those and contacting that agent, getting it under contract. So I might look for something that's like brand spanking new on the market, or we might pull a different list today that's something that's been on the market for you know a minimum of 60, 90 days that's just sitting there and you know they still need a solution to get their property sold. So be thinking about the different scenarios when you're applying these filters. I'm gonna do a number of uh, days on market as two for now. We can switch and just depending, but let's do that. I'm gonna leave the ARV percentage, let's say 70%, you know, switch that up once again, looking at the listed price and the after repair value based on comparable properties. I'm gonna leave pre-foreclosure status. I'm gonna leave your build too. I might come back to that just depending. I'm not gonna use the quick filters. You can see here property characteristics where it already has like single family. So this is a really great area or thing to remember is if you're looking for things other than single family, just come to this area and pick other things. So maybe you're also looking for mobile or manufactured properties, or maybe you also want to include in this list any duplexes or triplexes, you can add those things. I'm gonna leave it on single family for now, however. And then other things with the property characteristics. Under MLS status, sometimes I might really specify that I want them to be active because you might get a couple that are pending on the market since we're just pulling up on market in general. So if we wanted to, we could make sure that they're just active nothing else in the mix. There's those deal potential and ARV filters again, days on market. You can kind of see how it groups it up. You know, they're already here existing in these sections. Now, one other thing I might do, it just depends on the results that I'm getting. Like right now we're looking at 63 properties found with this criteria. So ARV 70%, been on the market for two days or less. Okay, single family residential. Sometimes I do the listing price. And I might look at the median sale price in the market. I just Google what's the median sale price in X market. And I just go below that. It's just something that I do, you know, not that it's something you have to, but it just helps me find those properties that are listed a little bit lower rather than getting a list of properties that maybe are a little bit nicer. You could also play around with like the ownership info. So finding properties that have been owned for a fair chunk of time rather than finding things that were maybe fixed and flipped and now active on the market again. So all of these things that I'm going through, it's really just to help you think outside of the box when you're imagining who you're trying to pull up in these lists. I am gonna go for the listing price. I looked this up previously for Chicago. It was somewhere around 350-ish. I can't remember when it was posted, so don't quote me on that. But I'm gonna say that I'm looking for properties listed at like 270,000 and below. I can always change this stuff. So I'm gonna go to apply that. Let's see what we get. So there's 42, I'm gonna apply and let's check them out. And you'll kind of just go down the line. Now, some of the things that I'm looking for when pulling up these lists is of course I wanna look at the photos just to see if I can kind of check out what the condition of the property is. And then I look at the MLS description, what the agent has wrote when listing that property. So let's just check out a couple of these and see what we get. So looking at this property, one of them that was pulled up, you can start to see that it's in pretty rough shape. Okay, so after looking at the photos, I would go over, like I said, to the MLS tab 
This is perfect. So fantastic opportunity for the savvy investor to rehabilitate, you know, this four bedroom, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So it gives you all of that information. And what's even better is that I can just immediately go and contact that real estate agent on this listing and make an offer here. So all of the information you need is right here after spending probably less than, than a minute on building those lists with your filters. Once you kind of get used to how it, it all operates and flows. Let's see if we can find anything else, but that's a property I would add and absolutely reach out to. And you can see here's the listing price. I could start running my comps right here and see, you know, before even reaching out if I wanted to, to kind of see where I'd be at. So everything you need right there. This property is also in pre foreclosure. So you can see all of the different information that you need to before reaching out to the agent, you know, in this case for on market properties. Kind of just going down the line and seeing what we have here so i can show some more examples Let's see okay so this one has boarded up windows so does the neighbor or the neighbor also does so maybe if it doesn't work out with this i can reach out to this one that's off market and kind of just check it out doesn't look like there's any pictures of the inside so same idea, I'd probably look at the photos, you know, and go to the MLS tab if you're looking for something like that that has potential or cash offer only. You'll see that a lot of the time in the description, like this is perfect. If you have a cash offer being sold as is, no repairs will be made, you know, et cetera, et cetera. To save the list, you just click select in the top right, select all visible click save. You can save the properties to a list like active listings list or whatever you'd like to. And you can even save the agents too, which will save into your agent outreach section. So you could kind of just go down the line and start talking to those agents. If you wanted to, you'd have all of their contact info right there in front of you without having to skip trace them or do anything like that, which is pretty nice. So kind of a simple flow and apply your filters, select the list and save it to your account. Well, there you guys have it. Let me know down in the comments what questions you have or just in general, if this helped you dive into pulling lists within batch leads, click the like button. If you found value in this, subscribe to our channel as always, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff, and be sure to join the community as well. And we hope to connect with you guys soon.